Hello, this is George Lees talking to Gordon Bowden, who's going to make some ses sensational disclosures. I want you to know that the Intel agencies have just shut down my second computer that we were going to use to record this. So I'm using old fashioned camera technology to record what Gordon Bowden has to do to say. Uh, we've had a very bad day at the office because we're getting into right into the heart of the Intel surveillance sector and we've had a variety of videos shut down in mid-production. Uh, Gordon's going to talk, I believe, about the AIM, the alternative investment market in London and the corruption that prevails there. Is that correct, Gordon? Well, it's a lead into the alternative investment market. It's now called AIM. AIM, and it used to be called the alternative investment market. However, there are uh, uh, approximately 1,300 odd companies currently registered on the alternative investment market. And are you on full volume and right in front of the microphone? Well, I've got the microphone to my. To oh, my just mouth. that you sound a little bit quiet. Well, let, let me just alter my settings just there oh, it's it's tolerable if you if you're as loud as you can be then just go with oh, it I can, I can adjust the, the volume just bear with me just bear with me is that any better yeah that's good I, that's loud and clear now okay um, the alternative investment market is a subsidiary of the London Stock Exchange and it was um, a derivative to allow uh, small startup companies to have the ability to float shares. And the, f the, uh, the owner, or one of the uh, main people, is a guy called Marcus uh, Stuttard, S-T-U-T-T-A-R-D. And at the moment, there are 1,254 listings on the alternative investment market which was launched in 1995 and it's raised over 24 billion pounds however they've helped over 3,000 companies so that means more than a half of delisted from the AIM now the AIM is not a regulated 24 yeah, billion pounds does not sound like a sense. No, no. The running that, that costs for the NHS in one year used to be 140 billion. Yes, they're that's they're right. now down to 107 since we imposed austerity on the taxpayers. Yeah, but what you don't understand is that since that 24 billion is the market capital uh, header for each company, however. Oh, for people, every scam, it can. No, um, no, 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 no. It has raised 24 billion. However, those companies, of which there were 3,000 overall on the AIM, what they do is they have a market capitalization, which is like the head or the, the total amount that they can raise for that particular company. However, they go on and uh, raise more capital by devaluing their share price by putting more shares into the market. Now the only people that invest in the alternative investment market are institutional uh, investors and little tiny private investors and very rich people because they see it as an open opportunity to make hundreds of millions if not billions by using virtual companies and that's what it is. It's a network, a casino for a, sy a syndicate of uh, very wealthy people and the crooks that work for them to steal billions if not trillions and these people are linked to members of parliament members of the house of lords and even top bankers like the Rothschilds who see this as a, an unregulated platform for stealing billions and they do and they do it every day much to the uh, demise of the uh, uh, financial state of this country. So, uh, is the gist of what is the gist of what you're saying is that they keep sloshing new shareholdings into the existing market, so that there is more and more 
inflation of how many stocks take control of each tangible company within the system? Is it is it is it like the issuance of money and the quantitative easing scandals that we've heard about already? What what they do is that as the uh, directors steal the cash and share assets of their particular launched company, whether it be a fake oil, gas and mining company, what they then do is, in order to keep the company afloat, they then put more shares on the market to raise capital. And they do this for up to 10 years. But nobody, and I say nobody, conducts due diligence, not on just a single company, but multiple companies that these directors are directors of. So they can be directors of 50 to 60 companies, oil, gas and mining companies, that are virtual companies. And you will know by looking at 50 Lothian Road, Festival Square, is that when you run through all the companies that operate out of that address, which is a mail forwarding service, and that means that a big company like Cairn Energy is operating out of a mail forwarding address, not a big skyscraper which has made billions where all their company directors operate out of a particular building. They operate out of a mail forwarding service. And we've Don't seen the implications of that where the mail is forwarded to company secretaries in places like Florida, Cuba, uh, Monterey in Mexico, or even a block of flats. That's right, or in and Geneva into the Rothschild Investment Trust. So we've got that on the website already yes. about how the money okay. is disseminated abroad in havens in chunks that are undetectable to regulators anywhere. Yeah, well, let, let me give you um, some of the top AIM companies at the moment is Gulf Keystone Petroleum. And there was a member of the House of Lords on there. I'm not going to go into that. But it had a market cap of over 1 billion, 669 million. Now there's another company, African Minerals, over a billion, 343 million. Cove Energy, over a billion. And Rock Hopper Exploration, 781 million. That means it's floated shares to the value of 781 million. And that company, I make public statement, is nothing more than a Ponzi scam interlocked with Falkland Oil and Gas, Argos Exploration, and um, let me see, there's, there's five companies, Border and Southern, also operated out of the Falklands. And the people have been buying shares as uh, advertised by their individual banks. Uh, where they sell shares because they have bought block shares for these worthless Ponzi scams. And and so they there are. is no product for any of those half no, dozen the, companies that you have cited there? The, these companies are specifically designed to steal the raised capital and uh, uh, cash burn it with director salaries and launder the money to subsidiary companies where they purport to purchase acquisitions of undervalued assets that when you check them if you had the time you would find out that those new acquired purchases that the directors of the parental company are also directors of that acquired company and this is how they've been stealing billions for you know for 30 40 years and does that go on in the it sounds a bit like what i read about what happened at rangers football club when the fans were defrauded by the directors well, the, that's the directors earned eight hundred thousand pounds a year but what they got as bonus payments were massive share flotations that you know they were being issue, issued de novo and it, it, you can see that it's like a hyperinflationary tool to give the directorate a massive bung to desert the supporters and to pass on all of the assets. What David Murray did was to pass them out of Rangers PLC. They published the accounts in parallel for a couple of years together. The figures were exactly the same as the income and the output from the Murray Investment Trust and all of a sudden they crashed Rangers PLC and sold it to Craig White for a pound 
and the rest of it was suddenly a major fundraiser for elite investors in Aberdeen Asset Management, which we've talked about at length yes, because of the that. directorships there. Tell them, tell the listeners some of the stories about the directorships at Aberdeen Asset Management. Well, I'm not going to go into that tonight, George. What I'm going to tell you is the United States security regulators have uh, claimed that the alternative investment market, the AIM as it's now called, is nothing more than a casino where 30% of the issuing issuers uh, didn't, didn't last more than a year. That means 30% of the companies that are on the AIM delist and deregister after one year. A lot of these companies um, are connected to mass fraud, as was a company called Langbar International. That's L-A-N-G-B-A-R, Langbar. That was a 375 million pound fraud conducted by the same network of con artists that are still on the AIM. Now, I, I wanted to... And it's as if the Yanks are preaching from a pulpit that none of this happens in Wall Street. That must be fraudulent too, to the nth degree. Of course, because what you have is that these companies that are listed, these fake virtual oil, gas and mining companies, there are thousands, thousands of them. They're, nobody's checked. I think I'm the only one that's ever made the research viable and to be forensic, where these companies can be proven via common directors to be interconnected in on the alternative investment market, the Toronto Stock Exchange, the TSXV, and the Australian uh, ASX. And so what you have is that these individual companies can be dual listed on multiple stock exchanges and that just provides them with a legal um, avenue for moving money across continents and that's what they're doing. And you're aware of the, you know, when the trans transitional government is put in place in places like Iraq or Libya, within a few months the first priority for that transitional government is to set up a trading center for stocks and shares in that brutalized country and that has now happened in Iraq and the Lebanon and in Libya and they've you know everybody has got different tiers of these scams operating within their country and they also regulate absolutely the issuance of money cash and currency either fiat or electronic in all of those brutalized countries that have been taken over by the same cabal? Well, that, that, what I'm saying is that nobody, and I mean nobody, has ever confronted these people as I have done. And the reason for that is that nobody's ever thought that a fraud of this magnitude could be conducted by a syndicate, an organized crime syndicate, who have seen the opportunity to, to move onto an unregulated stock exchange which the AIM is it's only lightly regulated because what they do is the AIM in order to cut the regulations for small startup companies made the regulations easy to manipulate now organized crime as such I'm talking mega billion pound organized crime syndicates where these people have um, used the alternative investment market, the AIM, as a vehicle to run wholesale fraud, theft and money laundering. And no one, no one regulates that in as much as that not one regulatory body oversees any company documents other than a financial report which is submitted by a complicit accountant and auditor and lawyer, signed and off by a lawyer. Your slant on the auditor's role is that they are advisors to optimize the criminal take from this? Yes, yeah, because and they're complicit. They, they are complicit because they are getting a cut for handling. And this is where this country has been uh, uh, used as a vehicle in major organized crime. So that's and KMPG, Deloitte, yes. 
Yeah, uh, all the Waterhouse Coopers and exactly. one other. I keep forgetting Price the fourth. Waterhouse Cooper is one of the companies that are named and KPMG. But those in uh, those regulators, auditors and accountants are complicit because they handle the accounts of these people, and you will actually find out that some of them have shares in them. Well, I was going to ask you if the actual four big auditors are listed themselves you know because the London Stock Exchange does is actually an investment entity itself isn't it you, yes you yeah, can take shares in the LSE yeah but if uh, if you understand how you make money out of penny shares penny stock shares is that it's called insider trading and what these people do which is the major top 20 shareholders in each of these Ponzi scams, oil, gas and mining companies, what they, had, what they know is how to manipulate the share price, when to buy and when to sell the shares. So as, this, as they uh, uh, speak the price up in uh, false information that's fed by RNS releases to the shareholders, what they then do is watch the share price rise and then they sell their shares. The stock price then drops because they're more uh, uh, people have sold more shares and bought more shares, so the sh the share price has been manipulated on purpose in order for the top 20 shareholders and directors who are given free optional shares to then sell the shares and make a shitload of money. I and think the most the famous examples of that that in recent times are Warren Buffett's acquisition of over one-third of Tesco's when he got the insider information from the outgoing CEO of Tesco's? That's right, but because once you know a, a given uh, inside information, when to buy and when to sell shares, that's the people that make the money. The losers are the little private investors, the little tiny people who mortgage their houses up to the hilt on the word of a bank sending them an, uh, 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 a slip or an email to say listen these are good companies eh? put some money on this you've got plenty in the bank we know what you've got in your bank account and so the poor gullible person is brought in like cannon fodder and these people are treated like sheep and another perfect example of that is the co-op bank you know they've had a series of CEOs now who get two million a year to pretend that they don't understand why the bank has collapsed in the last three years. If you Peter Marks appeared on Radio 4 on the Today program and he gave the economic lecture for the, I think it was the year 2011 or 2012, the year after uh, Mervyn King gave the same lecture as the outgoing head of the Bank of England and it was all talking up the prosperity in the bank, the unprecedented prospects and within 18 months all of that has gone in what they call the Lloyds Verdi project. They yep. sold that bank into a massive trillion dollar debt pool that was owned by the Lloyds Banking Group. They gave the chief executive's job to the head of the Lloyds Banking Group remuneration committee so that they could pay off the quizzling members of the cooperative movement and pretend that the whole thing was an accident and like Rob Ford in Toronto they've pretended that those CEOs who got two million each for maybe two months service at the head of that corrupted system to pretend that they were drug addicts and the BBC supports that wholeheartedly after they've sold the whole concept on Radio 4 none of it is in the Radio 4 transcript. You have to rely on investigative journalists' releases at that time, and I've still got the correspondence from the Co-op Bank that declared that they did not understand what I was articulately telling them, and they have referenced it to all of my website pages on all of those crimes as they occurred at the time. It is ruthless and vicious, and the poor old investors who still remember their mutual cooperative number when their mum set up their account are being robbed blind without the vaguest awareness. Let, let, me, let me just lead you down a forensic trail. You will know 
on the latest um, TV and press releases, a certain amount of MPs are calling for an inquiry into the missing dossiers of a paedophile ring that leads to Parliament, to the top of Parliament. Parliamentary paedophile rings. Now what happened was a, a sequence of dossiers went missing in the past, which, uh, if exposed, would have led to the biggest scandal in British public history. Now, one of the people calling for that inquiry is a gentleman called Mr. Zach Goldsmith. He is the MP for Richmond Park and North Kingston. Now, what the people don't understand is when you look deeper beyond the facade of somebody like Zach Goldsmith. And Zach just Goldsmith to confirm, you've mentioned Cove Energy. Yes. Zach Goldsmith is a relative of Britain's richest man, the Duke of Westminster. Is that correct? Yeah, but he's also the son. Because the Duke of, of Westminster. He's also the son of billionaire, late billion, uh, billionaire, Sir James Goldsmith. And this is where this cabal of um, uh, a syndicate of well heeled organised crime operators have been allowed to manipulate a market such as on the London Stock Exchange which is the alternative AIM and being able to make billions out of virtual oil, gas and mining companies. Now, Well it's worse than that, about? they're also involved in the directorship of the British Legion, That's you know right. the war profiteering effort, they That's have right. a litigation fund of over seven million that if any investigative journal accuses them of profiteering in any of the wars that they have engineered or profited from, they use that to put down the little guy that's trying to reveal the truth about those bloody world wars and all the conflicts we've had in the last 300 years. Okay, it is ruthless. But what you're looking at, George, you, you're, you're, you're missing the point here. What he's trying to do is uh, uh, appear to the general public to be the saviour and to expose paedophile rings in the top of government. Now, he's doing this for a reason, and I'll tell you why. Unbeknown to you, uh, but it's been well press recorded, Zach Goldsmith has just uh, ended his 11-year marriage admitting uh, infidelity with one Alice Rothschild. Now that name should ring a bell, because you wanted to talk about it. Yeah, I'm always interested in the Rothschilds, but I don't want now, to create a conspiracy there. Well, this is not a conspiracy. Okay, this is keep fact. telling me the facts. This is fact. Zach Goldsmith, under ID number 91544-7621, year of birth 1975, is a director of the Rainforest Foundation UK and it was incorporated on the 29th of the 9th, 2010 under company number 07391285. One of the directors is Mark Adrian Campanale and he, under ID number 9119243793979, year of birth, 1960. Tell me Campanale, how do you spell Campanale? Uh, that's uh, Charlie, Alpha, Mike, Papa, Alpha, November, Alpha, Lima, Echo. Yeah, got that. And his director number? Is 91192-4379. Thank you. Now, under his companies that he is the recorded director of and being affiliated to, you check when you run through the financials of those companies, most of zero pounds, they are junk. However, one struck a chord in my throat, which was a company called Cassano Merge Trading and Investment Limited. That's Cassano, C-A-S-S-A-N-O, yeah. Merge, M-U-R-G-E, Trading and Investment Limited. Now, strangely enough, you will find Company Directors Limited and Temple Secretaries, which is out of that massive boiler room 
of over 500,000 Ponzi scam shell companies Finchley Road run out of 788 790 Finchley Road ok I'm learning and I encountered company directors uh, this very morning when I was looking at local border solicitors companies and their, in, their interests in care homes that used to be state owned but are now privatised are and are being profiteered from from leaders of local communities that are unelected officers that are in power for life in our local regions and they're taking out all of the assets that were public assets when before Mrs Thatcher learned to steal from Finchley Road and that is shameful now all of the pensioners across the country are having to pay for private access to things that have been stripped out the council buildings and the council building have a massive year on year debt problem because the Rothschilds have engineered that internationally everybody is in a toxic debt pool by design and well, nobody I, understands their role in that except you and me well one of the people that uh, Zach Goldsmith is affiliated with so that means he's on the same board of directors with another with with Mark Adrian and Zach Martin. Goldsmith is a conservative politician right. or is he a socialist no, he's like a Baroness Blackstone some of it is really amusing he's he's a conservative and uh, here's the thing when you want to divert the attention from one thing you use uh, um, your ability to uh, to be able to throw a curveball and this is what Mr. Zach uh, Goldsmith is doing because when you look at his his mates Mark Adrian Campanale you will find it, it he's also uh, affiliated with uh, Fiber Fiberson or Fiber Geom Limited and that is Instant Companies Limited and Swifting Corporations oh, which, yeah, is, the usual which suspects. is the other massive boiler room in Bristol yeah. at one Mitchell Lane now when you look at the, his mates one of them is Jonathan Wyndham Mallins and he's a man that has been fined by the Financial Services Authority and fined £250,000 for insider trading and that's what it's all about the Financial Services Authority uh, fine individual directors for insider trading but they do not look at the bigger picture which is that these directors are directors of multiple companies where they are given optional shares where they also conduct insider trading and this is the biggest scandal that is affecting the British economy without anybody looking at it and, and so this doubles up also with the infrastructure contract scandals. I've been talking to a man on the riverbank this afternoon about the building of the Parliament building in Edinburgh and how they proceeded ever so slowly uh, with the trams project in Edinburgh and how now the third, fourth bridge is underway. You know, a lot of those things are funded, there's a contract agreement that is reneged upon instantly and is renegotiated with local councillors who get trickled down just to ignore the contractual commitment that were, they were given when they signed that contract to companies like, I forget what the company is that built the trams in Edinburgh, Bellfinger or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, those things are happening, that, that high speed rail contract with the deferral of any productivity until you know we've passed on all of the politicians that are negotiating it will be dead by the time our children pay for it uh, and, and by the signs of things it's highly likely to be crashed like a lot of these virtual product scams are you know once the products and uh, sorry once the take or the proceeds from that are safely laundered abroad by the methods that you're articulately, articulately describing. Well, look, look, George. Let me let me show you in in one specific instance. We're 29 minutes in well, now. It won't take more than a couple of minutes. Okay, go for Jonathan, it. Jonathan Wyndham Mallins. Jonathan Wyndham Mallins 
was uh, with a, with all his multiple companies. He was a director of King Hyphen Coal Corporation Limited. It's a delisted company. Now, when you look at the financials of that company, it had z it's got zero pounds, although it's a delisted company, and a net worth of minus twenty five million eight hundred and six thousand, and liabilities of forty eight million four hundred and sixty six thousand. Now these people. So that's just written off by the regulators. That's just written off by the regulators with no investigation, and yet this Jonathan Wyndham Mallins has, oh, has still got uh, four active, twenty-five resigned, and uh, thirty with twenty-seven dissolved companies. Where are the regulators? And they're solvent the with decent amounts at the bank. No, no, these companies are running on a debt facility. These companies are the companies that have been asset stripped and sh I'm talking hundreds of millions of pounds, but nobody, nobody has conducted any due diligence on this bunch of Australian con artists. So you talk about, um, I'm Jake the Pig with one extra leg, yeah, you can talk about him all you want, but there's a lot more Australians that have come out of uh, uh, that have come into this country and are asset stripping hundreds, thousands of companies on the penny stock without any fear of prosecution because multiple MPs are non-executive directors and members of the House of Lords are directors of these virtual oil, gas and mining companies. So I think we should leave it there, George. Yeah, that's excellent, Gordon. Thanks ever so much. Uh, I'll turn off the recording facility now and I'll get that on here as soon as I can. Under what title would you like? Well, you could 